You're such a stuck-up SOB. Okay, now we're ready for Crown and Comments, Episode 2. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage, Crown and Comments. This is the second one. We used to do coffee and comments, and the comments get so caustic, and now nah, that's not true. Uh, it's just when I do this late in the day, uh, I prefer to have my favorite adult beverage, which is Crown Royal. And it helps me get through the uh, process of doing this video. And this is just a thing I do maybe once a month to kind of go through some of the comments that you guys leave me, not just guys, guys and gals, <coughs> that you leave on my YouTube channel or my Facebook pages. And sometimes I get emails from you. And this is a time that uh, I go through those comments and I just, you know, kind of give you my answers, my impressions, my thoughts. Um, I, I would ask you not to take anything I say too seriously. This is a, a very relaxed, um, even maybe even humorous uh, content part of my uh, channel. So uh, please take everything with a grain of salt. If you don't have a sense of humor, um, you know, this is probably not the show for you to watch. Let's get started. Now, before I get into the show, I would like to remind you, if you're new to the channel, uh, please take a second to subscribe to our channel, especially if you're passionate about motorcycles. It's completely free. It doesn't cost anything to join or to subscribe. Um, and you can have YouTube notify you whenever we come out with new videos. I'm just checking my little screen here, make sure everything's okay. And I've got my laptop, got my MacBook Pro. I've got my list of uh, comments I'm going to go through. Actually, the first one <laughs> is just kind of a funny one. Um, just a couple weeks ago, uh, actually on September the 8th, I came out with a video where I went through my my 10 essential uh, Goldwing accessories for the 2018 to 2021 Goldwing. And I did what's called a premiere. Now, the premiere is where you set the video to uh, appear or become visible to you, the, the, the viewer, at a specific time of day. And I think I uploaded the video at about, I don't know, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I set it to premiere at maybe 5.15 in the afternoon. And I just happened to go in and look at it about 3 o'clock. Even though the video is not live, nobody can actually watch the video yet. I noticed that I already had two thumbs down. And nobody had even watched the video yet. What the hell? I mean, it's almost like you always get two thumbs down on every video you put out, no matter... When you put it out, no matter what the topic, no matter what the subject matter, it's just really funny. The video hadn't even started showing yet, and uh, I'm getting thumbs down. That's, I guess, maybe the thumbnail. Maybe they didn't like the thumbnail. So anyway, I thought I'd throw that in. Now, the next one uh, is a comment from Wingman4797. This is an email he sent me. And by the way... This is a perfect time for me to give you a public service announcement. Um, don't ever ride your motorcycle after you've been drinking. Um, I'm home for the night. I'm not going to get on the bike. Uh, occasionally, I enjoy, I say occasionally, okay, it's every day. Uh, I enjoy a, uh, you know, just a couple of fingers, a crown. And, uh, but I don't ever do that and then go out and ride the bike. Or if I'm out riding the bike in the evening, which is very rare nowadays, uh, and I go to a restaurant or something like that, I don't drink and then get back on the bike. I just think that's really, really stupid and irresponsible. Okay, let's go on. 
My 2018 Goldwing DCT throttle stuck wide open and I hit two concrete poles as I was parking. Wow. I called Honda and they said that this was the first complaint that they have regarding this problem. We need everyone to call Honda and get this problem fixed before someone gets killed. I have not heard of this. Um, this is the first time I've heard of somebody having a throttle stick open unless they accidentally, you know, uh, cranked the throttle open on a DCT. Maybe they had, I, I know Don said, Don Smith, friend of mine, said he had, he tried those grip puppies and it made the grip so thick that he inadvertently revved the engine one time. I don't know, have you guys ever had the uh, 2018 plus Goldwing DCT throttle stick wide open? Um, I mean, I'm really sorry. I hope you're okay, wingman. I, I don't, uh, I just have not heard of that being a big problem. Actually, his name's Howard. So, Howard, I hope you're okay. I hope you get the bike fixed. I'm sure it did some damage, serious damage. Um, I just haven't heard of that. So, if, if it, that seems, that sounds like a rare occurrence. And I'd be curious for you to follow up and send me another message when you get this resolved or if they are able to diagnose what happened on your motorcycle. I'd like to know what the follow-up is on that, what ended up happening. Now this one is from Lori Nadine. And see, we do have ladies that follow us on Cruise Man's Garage. You think it's all men, it's not. We have, you know, several different women that follow us. Okay, Lori, I just noticed uh, Sirius XM has zero female musicians highlighted with their own channels. All kinds of men and male groups, but women apparently are invisible at Sirius XM. Well, this female's money is no good, so no good there, so I canceled my long term subscription yesterday. I urge all female subscribers to do the same. This is disgusting. Women are valuable too. Can't argue with that. Uh, I am kind of surprised, actually. I'm surprised there isn't, you know, like a Barbara Streisand channel or a, uh, gosh, I don't know. There's so many uh, females, Aretha Franklin or, uh, you know, Diana Ross. I mean, just name the female singers that could have their own channels on uh, Sirius XM. I, I was completely unaware of that. So, Lori, I don't blame you. If you know, you know, that's the great thing. You don't have to subscribe and give him your money if that upsets you. Michael Taylor sent me a message on YouTube. He said, Did you test voice quality and volume between the two different microphones? I'm curious if they sound different to your writing group. This was um, on my Cena. ST1 Spider review. No, I did not, Michael. Um, I have a modular helmet, and so I have to use the boom mic. The other microphone would be if you have a, a full face helmet. So I did not try both microphones. I don't know if they're different. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I think Don uses the little stick on my, he has a full face helmet, so I, I don't know if he uses the boom microphone or the stick on microphone. He probably uses the stick on. I'll have to ask him. But he said, if he does, he sounds fine to me. Um, and I actually think that's probably a better system because the chin protector on the full face helmet is actually keeping wind off of the uh, microphone if you use that little stick on mic. So, Michael, I wish I could uh, give you an answer. If, anybody, if any of you out there have used the different microphones that Cena offers and you have an answer to his question, please put it in the comments down below. And if Michael's watching this video, he can check out your answers. Okay. Now, the next question has something to do with the Cena 30K. This is from, this is another YouTube comment uh, on a wing and a hog. Guess he has a Harley and a Goldwing. 
As you were working through your spider issues, I took another stab in getting my 30K to work as designed on my new Shoei RF1400. After the latest BIOS update, all seems to be working better now. In addition, the speakers sound much better on the new lid compared to my old one. Okay, that's good news. Um, so if you have a 30K, you may want to update the firmware and maybe it will uh, work better and will sound better from what on a wing and a hog is saying here. So I'll just pass that on to you. Some of you still have the 30K and that's good information. So we'll just pass that right on down. Now this is about the seat and this is a comment that was posted to my ultimate seat review that I did uh, I don't know how, gosh, it's been a year or so ago. And this is from Doug. Doug says, so let me get this right. You spend 30 grand for a motorcycle and you have to upgrade the seat. A little bit of sarcasm there. Uh, yeah, Doug, it's not that uncommon. I mean, these aftermarket seat manufacturers make seats for a variety of motorcycles. I don't think the Goldwing is unique in that... Uh, people are not necessarily comfortable on the OEM seat. I know a lot of Harley riders that buy aftermarket seats from Mustang or Hartco or other makers, manufacturers, Corbin, for example. And those are expensive motorcycles. They're 30 grand or more, and, and people are buying aftermarket seats for those. So it, it, I agree with you. It's frustrating. I agree with you. You shouldn't have to. But uh, unfortunately, that's the world we live in. So, Doug, appreciate your thoughts on that. Went to use my parking a few days ago. I think he maybe means the parking brake. I uh, had used it a few times before, and it held. This time it did nothing. Need to adjust. For emergency use, keep a heavy rubber band in your pocket wrap it around the throttle and have it pull on the front brake lever as an emergency parking brake. Huh? I'd never thought of that. <laughs> I guess that's a good idea. You could also use like a Velcro strap uh, to wrap around your front brake lever to lock the uh, disc on your front brake to kind of, you know, use that as an emergency parking brake. But he, he has a good, you know, a lot of people do that. Their, their parking brake... Um, you know, after you know, sometimes you ride off with the parking brake engaged, and after time it wear, you know, the cable stretches and the brake pads wear, and you ha it has to be adjusted. And sometimes you pull the parking brake up, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't hold the bike at all. I think Don's got this situation on his bike, he doesn't even use the parking brake anymore because it doesn't hold anymore, it needs to be adjusted. Good idea, a real strong, heavy-duty rubber band or a Velcro strap, wrap it around the throttle and the parking brake, and you've got a, I mean, in the front brake, and you've got a uh, kind of a DIY parking brake solution. Thank you, Dave. Good idea. Okay, I'm in the market. This is from Howard. I'm in the market for a new jacket. What model is your Olympia jacket, and do you recommend it? I have the Air Glide 4, I think. It's either the 3 or the 4. I've had it a couple of years. I think they now have an Air Glide, Air Glide 5. I'm not sure exactly what their current model is. Uh, yes, I love it. It's the best jacket I've owned. This is my second or third Olympia Air Glide jacket. And for the climate here in North Texas, it's really the perfect all around. I can wear it almost year round. There's only maybe a few really cold days where I'll wear my three quarter. I have a three quarter Olympia jacket that sometimes I'll wear because it's a little bit warmer and I leave the liner in that jacket. What I love about the Air Glide jacket is it has a, a liner that will keep you warm down to at least 40 degrees, 42 degrees, which is about as cold as I ride anyway. And I usually just put the liner on and then put the jacket on over the liner. I don't go to the trouble of zipping the liner into the jacket every time I use it because here in Texas, we'll get 
several days that are in the 40s, and then it'll jump up into the 70s or 80s, and I won't use the liner. So rather than zip it in, zip it out each time, I just throw the liner on and then put the jacket on over it. But one thing I love about the Air Glide, and I didn't even realize this was a feature until about a year ago, that liner will fit over the jacket shell so that if you get, and I keep one of these rolled up, one of these liners, I keep it rolled up in my left saddlebag. I use a little, uh, oh, like one of those little uh, uh, bungee cords to kind of tie it up and hold it into a, it only takes up this much space, it's really small. And if it starts raining, I can take that liner out and I can put it on over the shell, over the jacket. So I can wear it on the outside or I can wear it underneath. I love that flexibility because that way I don't have to worry about the shell getting wet if I'm riding in the rain, just the liner. And the liner's waterproof. It's also quite warm. So, and what, another thing I like about the Olympia liner is if you're on a trip or a tour or something like that, and you go into a restaurant, you can wear that liner just as a jacket. I mean, it looks like just a nice, you know, casual, uh, cold weather jacket. It, you know, it doesn't look like a motorcycle jacket liner. So I'm very happy with Olympia and they're not sponsored. I mean, they're not sponsors of my channel. You know, I paid for those Olympia jackets uh, just like anybody else, just so you know. Um, and I'm just a big fan of them. So. Thank you, Howard, for that question. Hope that answers your question. Robert is asking me about the Garmin GPS. Just curious, what do you use your Cena for? Do you pair it with your Garmin GPS? Uh, I use the Cena primarily. Most of the time I'm riding by myself, so I'll use it to uh, pair to the Goldwing to listen to audio just radio or XM. When I had XM, I would listen to XM radio on a trip. But I'll just listen to AM, FM radio, or I'll listen to music through CarPlay. But I'm basically listening to the, to the Goldwing audio system. I also have it paired to my Garmin GPS on the second channel. There is a GPS channel and I'm going to do a video showing how I pair my Cena, and it works the same with Cardo. Whether you're using a Pack Talk Bowl or whether you're using a Cena Spider or a Cena 50S or a Cena 30, it doesn't matter what you're using. All of these headsets have two channels. They have a mobile phone channel, which is what the Goldwing uses, and then they have a GPS channel or a second. You could also use it for a second mobile phone. But when you have it paired to these two different sources, these two different channels, channel B will mute channel A. I call it channel A and B. But the GPS, if it has instructions uh, or navigation audio that comes across that channel, it mutes the mobile phone channel or the Goldwing audio so that you can hear the navigation instructions. And once it is finished with those instructions, it goes back to your Goldwing Audio. And it works wonderfully. I have never had problems pairing the Garmin to either the Cena or the Cardo headsets. And I get so many questions about this, I'm going to do a special video just on how to pair these headsets. I'll do both the Cardo and the Cena. It's a very similar process. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how I pair it to my Garmin GPS. Thank you, Robert, for that question. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Chris asked me a question, wondering why you stop using the Cardo. Is it because you have numerous options? I go back and forth. I have three different helmets, I think, and I have different headsets mounted on different helmets. And uh, I stopped using the Cardo recently because I received the Spider ST1 and I've been doing testing on it, so I switched over to the Cena system. Uh, but I go back and use the Cardo. In fact, I just updated the firmware on the Cardo PackTalk Black and PackTalk Bold today. And I'm going to be doing a video on that update, uh, new firmware. 
And uh, so, you know, I go back and forth. Sometimes I use Cardo. Sometimes I use Cena. Um, I think they both are good. I think they both have advantages and disadvantages. And um, so I, it's not that I've stopped using the Cardo. I just uh, am not using it currently because I've been doing some long-term testing on this ST1 Spider. Michael sent me an email and this is an interesting story. I kind of saved this toward the end because it might take some time because some of you out there may have had something similar. He says, I was stranded on my brand new 2021 Goldwing due to a dead battery. I had it towed to the nearest Honda dealer and was told that the bike was perfect. The issue was a faulty battery. There are forums with others having the same problem. Perhaps you could look into this and create a video on this issue. I have heard of this. I've heard of two or three, uh, especially with the 2021 Goldwings, that have received brand new motorcycles, and it's like they're shipping them with uh, defective batteries. Now, I don't know if this is because there's an inherent problem with UASA. I don't know how you say it. Is that how you say UASA? Is that the name of the battery company? That's what my Goldwing has. Um, I don't know if it's just a problem right now because of COVID and all the supply chain problems. I don't know if that has anything to do with these battery issues, but I have had I have heard of two or three people with 2021s that have had a similar problem where the battery, I mean, right out of the box, the brand new bike and the battery dies. He followed up with me. I believe it's the same individual, Michael, that just sent me another email today. And as I understand it, Honda would not reimburse him for his towing charge, which I think was over $200. I may be wrong about some of these details, but please bear with me. And they refused. I think he said they refused to replace the battery. That's hard to believe. I would think that would be covered under warranty, but maybe they consider that a, a normal wear item on a brand new motorcycle. I mean, I can understand if you left the bike turned on, you left the lights on, and it ran the battery dead, sure. I, I guess I could see that. But <clears throat> um, obviously this is an issue because I've received several emails on this. Now, and I've seen some other YouTube videos where other YouTubers have bought 2021 Goldwings and they've had bad batteries right out of the box. So there obviously is something going on here. I just actually ordered a brand new battery for my bike, a new UASA, same as the OEM battery that I'm planning to replace mine, not because it's dead, just because it's been over three years and I just, to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. And uh, hopefully that battery is okay. But have any of you had this issue or do you know anybody that's had this issue where they have a brand new motorcycle, brand new battery, and they end up stranded because of a dead battery? Uh, I've gotten some emails from people that said their batteries last seven, 10 years, no problems. I've never had that luck. I usually have to replace them after two or three years. But I'd be curious what your experience has been. Uh, if, you, if you know somebody or if you yourself have had this problem that Michael's talking about, please put it in the comments down below. And if this is a real issue, Honda, you need to step up and cover this on warranty. Uh, you can't expect people to pay this much money for a, your flagship motorcycle and for them to be expected to have to replace the battery, which is 150 bucks, thereabouts, uh, you know, after just a few hundred miles. I mean, that's ridiculous. So come on. Um, there should be exceptions to this. If there is a rash of bad batteries out there, Honda needs to step up and cover this, reimburse people for these batteries that they're having to, to replace. I'd like to know your thoughts. Put it in the comments down below. I would like to find one more comment that I was going to mention to you. And this comment was posted to my 
Weg, uh, by the way, I was mispronoun mispronouncing it. Um, one of my subscribers sent me an email. It, actually, the video is on my Amazon page. Oh my God, I'm mispronouncing Wago. I've been calling them Wago connectors. I can't. Pr what is the deal with pronunciations? I've been pronouncing Cena headsets for 10 years, and now I find out it's Cena. Well, it's not Wago connectors. It's and it's not even Wago. I thought, well, you know, if if I'm mispronouncing Wago, maybe it's Wago. Oh no, it's Wago. Like W A U G O. Oh my God! So, Wago connectors, okay. But anyway, it was on this video, the the first one I did. I did two videos on converting the uh, Wago. I can't. I, I just can't get used to that. To me, it's Wago. But converting those over to the two two one connectors, the smaller, flatter connectors. And actually, uh, Shane uh, posted a message, said, I see you took my advice on the newer ones. Actually, Shane did uh, bring it to my attention about these 221 connectors. Thank you, Shane. Uh, let's see. Let me get down here and find this because you're going to love this one. Oh, yeah. It's at the very bottom of the list of my comments. <laughs> Some people have replied. His comment on that video is, you're such a stuck-up SOB. And he even put three exclamation marks after SOB. What did I do? Is it because I mispronounced Wago? I went back and watched that video from the beginning to end. I don't know what about that video makes me a stuck-up SOB. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not suggesting that he's not right. He may very well be right. Um, but anyway, William, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I'll try to do better, I guess. A couple of people did come to my defense. <laughs> thank you, Larry and Don, of course, Don Smith. So, um, but anyway, that's Crown and Comments for this month. It is... September 2021. Don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, the little thumbs up. That really does help our rankings with YouTube. It makes a huge difference. Thanks to all of you that are subscribers. Thanks for all your support. And I look forward to seeing you on the next Cruise Man's Garage.